Hey nerds, welcome back. Hopefully you're doing well. Continuing the Everything You Need to Know series on Cetus, we need to talk about the quills. We've already gone over everything and everyone you need to know in Cetus, so it seemed appropriate to continue with the quills before we run around on the plains and continue to Fortuna. Quick spoiler alert, if you haven't played enough and you've not completed the War Within yet, this video is basically one huge spoiler for you. Please do yourself a favor and play through the quest first before you ruin the surprise for yourself. I'm not gonna say this again, click off the video if you haven't played that quest yet. Another thing, firstly, thanks for clicking on the video. If you're new here, my name is Swang and today we're doing a not so random video on Warframe. If you liked the video, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more Warframe videos. Alright, so who are the Quills? The Quills are a secretive order who serve the Unum. We briefly described the Unum in the All You Need to Know About Cetus video. But to cut through the chase, the Unum is a mysterious central religious figure to the Ostrom, who resides in the tower outside of the plains of Eidolon. The Quills are also friends to the Ostrom people and can even be considered allies to the Tano. They also have extensive knowledge about the secrets of the Tano and seemingly live throughout different timelines. But enough lore, you can read up on that your damn selves. Now, how do you gain access to the quills, and where the hell are they? First and foremost, you will have to have completed the Sias Vigil and the War Within quest. After you've done that, go to your navigation segment and select Cetus. Once on Cetus, we're going to walk all the way from the landing zone to Konzu. Now you could quick travel when you're in a hurry, but this is one of those moments that you want to capture and enjoy. At Kanzu, we take a right turn and walk up some steps that lead to a hidden door. To enter this door, turn into operator mode and you have unlocked a secret Tenno Wraith party cave, full of weaponry, armor and extra goodies. In that cave you'll find Onko Primary, once the Ostron village historian turned ally to the Tenno, supplying them with weapons, knowledge and other services. When first talking to Onko, you will receive a mode amp. The mode amp concentrates the void energy from your Tenno and allows you to utilize it as a weapon. Asking him to browse his wares will show you a list of amp parts, arcanes, cosmetics and other useful items. These items, parts, etc. can be purchased with quill standing. Now to earn standing for the quills you don't really have to do a lot. The only thing you need are sentient cores. But assuming you're new and haven't played any sentient content other than the quest to gain access to the Wraith Cave, you might ask yourself, what the fuck even are sentient cores? Sentient cores can be seen as the heart of sentient enemies. If you've been on the plains of Eidolon at night, you've probably seen the tiny blue angry demons called Vombalists or the Eidolon Terrorists. There are different levels to these cores, granting you more standing depending on which one you get. Intact sentient cores are dropped by Vombalists, granting you 100 standing. Exceptional sentient cores are dropped by the Eidolons, one each for every Zenovia you destroy. These grant you 500 standing. Flawless sentient cores only drop after successfully capturing an Eidolon by destroying the lure, granting you 1200 standing. Now I won't really go into depth how to fight the Eidolons in this video, as it's such a large topic and deserves its own video, just to be able to, to discuss the weaponry amps and strategies, uh, so that. So now that we know who the Quills are, what they offer, and how to gain standing with them, how do we level up our standing, and what are some of the harder parts about it? And also, what the fuck do the different amp options do? So let's discuss the ranks first, and then see what they unlock, and what you might need to rank up even faster. Starting with rank 0, neutral. Nothing to see here, this is where you start out with all factions. After that we got rank 1, moat. Requires 10 intact sentient cores, 5000 standing and 30,000 credits. This grants you access to the first tier amp components, arcanes and armors. Rank 2 would be observer. Requires 20 intact sentient cores, 22,000 standing and 50,000 credits. You'll gain access to all second tier equipment and it unlocks the Mask of the Revenant quest, which is important if you want to obtain the Warframe called Revenant. Rank 3, Adherent, requires 10 Eidolon shards, 44,000 standing and 100,000 credits. Access to all third tier equipment is gained and you can now guild your amp. The fourth rank is called Instrument, 20 Eidolon shards, 70,000 standing and 250,000 credits are needed and grants you access to all 4th tier stuff. 
And lastly, a rank 5, The Architect. A 30 idol on shards, a 99,000 standing, and 500,000 credits needed. Access to all equipment, including a Captura scene, decorations, though most importantly, offensive arcanes and Cetus Wisps for standing. Now with the ranks, you can see that there are different tiers to the items you unlock while ranking up. So what does this have to do with the Operator Ms, and why does it matter? Well, you see, we Warframe players, aside from match cases, are pretty lazy. So we like to come up with naming schemes. This one is actually pretty simple. An amp is made up of three parts. Prism, a scaffold, and a brace. And every rank, other than rank 5, offers three of those parts. So if I say Tenno, you should get a 223 amp. It means a tier 2 prism, a tier 2 scaffold, and a tier 3 brace. This results in a Schwak, Schwakzun, Lorin combo, which by coincidence is a really strong amp and will most likely carry you throughout the beginning of your Eidolon hunting career. But as with all things Warframe, and especially with all things modular in Warframe, build whatever you like. Experiment and find out what suits you best. The best amp that roars through the meta will not suit your needs if you don't like the handling. But where do you start out? Do you just use the mode amp until you're rank 3 to build a 2-2-3 combination, or do you start building an amp from the first tier straight away? In my opinion, taking into account how hilariously bad the mode amp is, I'd consider sticking with it until you're at least rank 3. Building a full tier 1 amp is simply not worth the waste of resources, and you can spend those literally anywhere else. And as to the question why you should build an amp, there are certain items fights, rewards you would want to get of whom the bosses require you to have one. Now it is possible to take each and every one of them down with the mode amp, but that takes ages. Predominantly though, amps are used for Eidolon hunting, Prophet Taker and the Ropalolis fight, each with their own unique reward. Now to the practical daily kind of stuff, we have arcanes. Arcanes are a bit finicky, because you need 10 of them to get the maximum effect. Taking into consideration that they are quite expensive on the old standing wallet, you might want to look up what arcanes are useful for your specific setup. I would say Magus Husk and Magus Elevate are the first ones you should look into, simply to keep your Warframe alive during those tough fights, as Elevate heals your Warframe on transference out and Husk gives you 150 plus armor. Later on you should think about investing in Virtuous Shadow to increase the damage you do on the Eidolon, look more to that in the next section. Now I will do a best of amps with their own use cases and of course a full meta build including arcanes in a different video. There is so much to talk about and it would defeat the purpose of talking about the quill strictly because there's a lot to gain from Little Duck in Fortuna 2. It also wouldn't be fair to talk about focus farms, what's cool to take etc right now because to be honest I have a everything you need to know about the operator video in the works that'll summarize everything in a neat little package. But I can already hear the Wukong main screaming. But swag, X and part needs Cetus Wisps or a ton of mining, is it even worth it? But to be honest, it depends. As much as I want to slap you in the face right now and call you a dirty I'm sorry, where was it? Right, as much as I want to say of course numbskull, it really doesn't depend on if you want to hunt Eidolons and do Profit Taker and the like. Because guess what, if not, then you don't need a custom amp. Everything from focus schools to operator arcanes can be used without ranking up the quills. You can just purchase them from trade chat or use warframe.market if you value your platinum and use them. Then what are some of the annoying parts, resources and thingy-madoodads you need to farm for in order to get some decent amps? Primarily gems. Almost every part needs at least one gem as a required resource. So get your mining tool ready, because you'll be in and out of those caves more often than Johnny Sins. Alongside with gems, a lot of natural and animal resources are needed. These can be obtained by hunting and fishing on the plains of Eidolon. But the most annoying slash frustrating resource, the one that truly ties the news for most people, are the Cetus Wisps. See, these are small life forms that randomly spawn across great lakes of the plains. Additionally, they only spawn in reliable numbers during a night cycle. This basically translates into you using your Volt or Gauss for their actual speed instead of jerking off to how fast you can theoretically be. Now if you're smart, you take a resource booster with you, equip loot and enemy scanning mods like it's the last you'll ever get to do, and cruise around the shorelines with your Arcwin. Why? Well, number one, it's way faster than any of your frames. Number two, you can enter and exit the planes a lot faster to reset the drop location. 
You see, since they spawn randomly, it's better to just run around Gaurus Lake once, collect the wisps and then head out and then back in again. So to recap, and for the people who don't want to sit around for a long time, the quills are allies to the Tenno. They have multiple items to buy that will help you fight sentience more effectively. The ranking system is quite easy and fast to rank up. Hunt down Eidolons to gain sentient cores for standing. Farm a ton of items from the plains to get your amp ready. I think that covers everything. If I missed something, please let me know in the comment section below and tell me what you think of the quills and Eidolon hunting. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more comprehensive warframe guides. You won't want to miss the following videos to complete the Cetus experience. Stay safe out there, Tenno. Later.